All right. So as she said, I am here to talk to y'all today about tobacco and um, its effect on the global level. I seen in the chat earlier today that there was um, somebody asking how much control does big tobacco currently have? And we're gonna dive a little bit into that during this presentation. But before we get started, of course, I gotta tell y'all who I am. So I am Dagan Smith. I currently live in Shepherd, Texas. And I'm an incoming freshman at Stephen F. Austin State University. Go Lumberjacks. <laughs> and I'm pursuing a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Advocacy has been a big part of my life. For the last four years, I've been a youth leadership council member for Texans for Safe and Drug Free Youth. And for the last three years, I've been a Say What Teen Ambassador. And down at the bottom, you can find my handles if you want to find me on either Instagram or Snapchat. So what will we be getting into today? Well, first, the top five international tobacco companies. We're going to go a little into detail about them. I'm going to show you all some information. And then afterwards, we're going to talk about the marketing tactics that some of these companies use around the world. Then how does big tobacco fool us? How do they try to portray a good image? Then we're going to be diving right into rates and statistics. And lastly, the change around the world that advocates and advocacy companies can create. So across the world, the largest tobacco markets are China, Indonesia, the US, Russia, and Japan. Selling almost two and a half trillion cigarettes in 2018, China had by far the largest cigarette retail market in the world. With just over 300 billion cigarettes sold, Indonesia ranked second that year, given the largest cigarette retail market in countries such as China, Indonesia, and Japan. It comes to no surprise that the Western Pacific region has the highest number of tobacco smokers worldwide. In 2020, close to 400 million people within the region smoke tobacco. So now that I've talked a little bit about that, now let's dive into those five companies. So we have China Tobacco, Philip Morris International, BAT or British American Tobacco, JTI or Japan Tobacco Inc. and the Imperial Brands. And just a quick fact, these five transnational or international organizations had more than 43% of the global market sales. In 2017, that number rose to 80.6. So we're gonna dive into China Tobacco. They are the single largest producer of cigarettes. They are not just one organization, but consist of hundreds of tobacco companies, manufacturers, and suppliers. This organization is involved in everything from tobacco leaf production to selling the brands. So the CNTC is the largest producer of cigarettes in the world, as I said earlier. With an estimated 270 million smokers, it produces 2.5 trillion cigarettes, making it the single largest producer in the world. Second, the CNTC is owned by the government of China. It's not a private business. This one is owned by the Chinese government. Lastly, the CNTC has business relationships with other international tobacco corporations. For example, Philip Morris International signed an agreement with the CNTC in 1994 to allow the manufacture and sale of the Marlboro brand. That same year, Philip Morris International began sponsoring the China National Football League. So next we're gonna dive into Philip Morris International. Now, we might have heard of Philip Morris International before, especially if you've been to the conference before, as they are the ones behind Marlboro. So Philip Morris International is the second largest tobacco company in the world. The company is headquartered in New York, but they have offices in both Switzerland and Hong Kong. And here's a, another little quick fact. Philip Morris International decided to break away from the Philip Morris USA due to the US restrictions on both cigarettes and vapes. So diving into our bullet points, in 2018, Philip Morris International, or PMI, held almost 30% of the global market. That means they had products in over 180 markets selling cigarettes and other tobacco products and non-combustible nicotine-based products. And diving into the second bullet point, the company owned six of the top five international cigarette brands in 2018. Its most popular, as I said earlier, is Marlboro. 
And lastly, PMI has strongly opposed tobacco control legislation and regulation across the world. The company has used a variety of strategies and tactics to influence tobacco control policies and change existing regulations. Some of those, for example, are funding pro-tobacco research, lobbying on decision makers, and intimidating governments with threats of litigation or of taking legal action. Next, we have British American Tobacco. They're the third largest tobacco company in the world. They were established in 1902, but the, they are headquartered in London in the United Kingdom. Its business operates in all regions of the world, and it operates as Rental American Inc. here in the United States. In 2020, the BAT, or British American Tobacco, held over 12% of the total global cigarette market by retail volume. And in June 2020, it reported total revenue of nearly $16.5 billion. And next, as it says, controversial campaigns targeting women. Women who smoke less than men globally are a key demographic for tobacco companies. Tobacco companies have identified packaging and brand design, as you can see with the advertisement on the screen. Uh, they feel as those are important ways to appeal to women. Large international tobacco companies have launched female targeted brands. For example, in April 2011, British American Tobacco introduced Vogue Pearl, described as the UK's first demi slim cigarette. British American Tobacco then defended itself against its claims that it downplayed the health risks associated with smoking in favor of the trapping of style, supermodels, and staying slim. And trust me, they are not the first company to go out here and have a controversial campaign towards both women and girls and uh, the youth. Next up, we have JTI. JTI, or Japan Tobacco Inc., is a tobacco business owned by the Japan Tobacco Group. This company was formed in 1999, so it's fairly young, and JTI's headquarters are in Geneva, Switzerland. The company's business is extremely globalized. JTI sources a tobacco leaf from 33 countries, manufactures its products in 26 countries, and distributes its products in an additional 130 countries. In 2020, the company reported on its website that it experienced a continuous profit growth of $11.3 billion. Next, we have JTI targets youth through paid social media influencers. This marketing strategy exposes kids to advertising and promotes tobacco use among young social media users. It was also reported that JTI brands Winston and Camel were seen around schools in eight countries. Now, another little quick fact I just wanna share with y'all. JTI or Japan Tobacco Inc. is the number one uh, selling company in Europe. I thought it'd be British American Tobacco, but through research, it was JTI. And lastly, we have Imperial Brands. Imperial Brands, which was formerly known as Imperial Tobacco, uh, held just under 4% of the global cigarette market, making it the smallest out of the top five. In 2020, Imperial Tobacco operated in over 160 countries selling cigarettes, roll your own tobacco, smokeless tobacco, cigarette paper, and cigars. One of its main brands that you might recognize is Winston. And its e-cigarette brand is Blue, with its heated tobacco brand being Pulse. The company's key markets are the United States, Germany, Australia, Spain, and the United Kingdom. And lastly, in 2011, Imperial Tobacco launched its Richmond Super Slims, promoted as the first super slim brand at the time. The Grocer Retail Magazine reported that the pack was embossed with a stylish pink design and that it was clearly designed to appeal to female smokers. And that ad, as you can see, is to the left. And as of 2021, the Imperial brands continue marketing their specialist cigarette brand, which appeal to specific consumer groups. Among these is Jade, a brand of super slim cigarettes with a logo featuring cursive letters and stylized butterfly logo. Now you might be asking, Dagan, where'd you get all this information from? And this amazing website by the University of Bath from England, and it is called Tobacco Tactics. Go in there, give them a quick little search, and you can find all this information and more. So furthering on with the presentation, 
how does the industry market around the world? So I dived into some uh, key points about them, but how do they specifically market? And it shows that they have marketing techniques created and perfected by the tobacco industry in the developed markets are now being used in emerging markets where tobacco control regulations are weak. So British American tobacco, uh, such as BAT, get around laws prohibiting the use of misleading terms such as light and low tar, with the use of color coding to signify low tar cigarettes to smokers. The BAT or British American Tobacco is attempted to develop the super slim cigarette segment in Brazil using the Vogue brand. After the 2009 brand uh, variants such as Blue and Scented Aroma line, Vogue sales increased by 55%, selling 34.6 million cigarettes in the first half of the year. In Russia, the Kent Nanotech cigarette line is marketed with sleek packaging and activated charcoal filters, a term shown to lead consumers to believe that the new technology makes cigarettes less harmful. And in Africa, the British American tobacco heavily targets youth by sponsoring concerts and promoting the sale of single cigarettes, which are cheaper than the 20 stick packs and accessible to youth. In 2008, the British American Tobacco internal report stated that Benson and Hedges music festival across Africa had caused a 29% increase in market shares among young affluent and urban smokers. Now, one thing I did wanna stress heavily on this uh, slide itself is that down at the bottom, the sale of single cigarettes, that regulation is restricted in the United States. You cannot buy a single cigarette from anywhere. You have to buy them in the packs of 10 or 20, but the sale of single use, extremely illegal here in the United States. So how does big tobacco fool the globe? You know, they're trying to portray this good image. They don't want people to really understand how harmful they truly are. Back with British American Tobacco, uh, although they have stated that it is, they are committed to carrying out youth smoking prevention, their company has been accused multiple times of targeting youth in their marketing activities. In 2011, the BAT introduction of cigarettes targeted at schools and university coincided with the revelation that the company was funding various scholarships for the citizens of Afghanistan to attend universities. And lastly, in 2000, Nottingham University, also in uh, England, came under scrutiny for its decision to accept a donation from the British American Tobacco. This shows that big tobacco has continuously targeted the younger generations with their products. Next is the Philip Morse International Strategy. Now, my quote here got a little misconstrued, but we'll get to see that more later. But the quote does read, our goal is to deliver a smoke-free future. And it is shown that on their website, they heavily market e-cigarettes and vapes, and they use misleading terms like smoke-free future. They stated on their website again that the best choice for any adult smoker is to quit nicotine altogether. However, for those who don't quit, they deserve better alternatives. And their better alternatives meaning Philip Morris's vapes. So I'm gonna show y'all a little bit of their webpage real quick. And here you can see, this is homepage front and center, you look up Philip Morris International and this is what you're gonna find. Right there, big on their uh, homepage, we have a group of four people and it says delivering a smoke-free future, big and bold. We are one of the world's leading tobacco companies and we are committed to finding alternatives to cigarettes as quickly as possible. This is that portraying a good image. This is the use our alternative being our vapes we are funding. And if you look up at the top, we have those tabs. Now, one of them does state smoke-free life. Why don't we dive into that one real quick? And this is what you'll see. Smoke-free life, giving up cigarettes and enjoying a smoke-free life is not always easy. But what is smoke-free life? So they're essentially trying to get you to leave the cigarettes, but stay on your nicotine dependency and join their e-cigarettes. Down at the bottom, you can read at Philip Morris International, we are focused to stop selling cigarettes. The best choice for any adult smoker is to quit nicotine altogether. However, for those adult smokers who do not quit, they deserve better alternatives. I think I've heard that one before. We just mentioned it like a minute or two ago. 
as you can see, Philip Morris is trying to portray that good image. But how can you portray a good image when we look into the rates and statistics? And that's exactly what we're fixing to be going into next. So what do they look like? What do our global rates and statistics look like? Well, as you can see, we have a graph. And on the graph, it shows that as tobacco volume or the amount of cigarettes in the market have been sold has decreased, the price has increased. They know that users who are addicted, uh, so you know those minor price changes, they won't really affect them because those tobacco users are still gonna use the product regardless. And if you look down at the bottom of the screen, we have that quick fact again, the tobacco industry is the most profitable industry in the world, hands down, but they are the number one deadliest. So we've been talking a lot about cigarette sales and how many people, but we're gonna dive a little bit more into that with here are the nine highest countries. Don't worry, this ain't class. I'm not gonna go through all these, but I am gonna talk about a few. So compared to America, where tobacco rates have been steadily declining, most underdeveloped countries have higher smoking rates due to the lack of resources available. Where big tobacco lacks in the US and other developed countries, they make up in countries like Kiribati, which if you've never heard of Kiribati, it's a small island nation in Oceania, which is west of California, where their total smoking rate is above half their population. Or in countries like Jordan, which is also you know, located in Africa, right next to Egypt, uh, they have a total men smoking rate of over 70%. So big tobacco can retain the control over the global market because they have small countries to take advantage of. So, you know, that's a lot about tobacco and I wanna to talk to you a little bit about e-cigarette sales. So in 2011, there were 7 million e-cigarette users worldwide. Currently, it is reported there are 55 million. Worldwide vaping sales reached 15.7 billion in 2018, and they're expected to reach 40 billion by 2023. That's a little under two years from now. And of course, the three largest markets for vaping products are the United States, the United Kingdom, and Japan. So that's been a lot. We've talked about a lot, what the companies have done, how the companies have marketed, the controversial campaigns that these companies would use, and the smoking rates, which that, as I said, is a lot, but we can do a lot too. So us being advocates, we try to create change in our state and in our country and across the globe. And that's exactly what we're talking about next. How, how have these advocates created change across the globe? So I have listed here, four different organizations, four different companies that are dedicated to preserving health and pushing us to, toward a smoke-free future. So first I wanna dive into CATCA. CATCA is a nonprofit organization that is committed to creating a safe, healthy, and drug-free community globally. CATCA has established 305 coalitions in 28 countries on five continents since their inception of the internal programs in 2005. There are over 11,349 international programs and coalition members globally, and they help with everything from youth alcohol abuse to tobacco use, illegal substance abuse, and more. And I have a personal connection with CATCA since I attended their conference twice. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, which we've all learned to know and love, is the nation's health protection agency. The CDC saves lives and protects people from the health threats that the CDC will conduct critical science and provides health information that protects our nation against expensive and dangerous health threats. And they respond to them whenever they arise. Being the driving force of knowledge during the current COVID-19 pandemic, the CDC tracks every health threat that will affect us Americans and everyone worldwide. According to the CDC, we have approximately 5.4 million people die each year due to tobacco-related illnesses, a figure that is expected to increase to more than 8 million by 2030, a little less than nine years away. The CDC has an interactive map on their website called the Global Tobacco Surveillance System, 
which shows data from most countries across the world. It is a great resource to use. The next two, I personally don't have all the information available for me, but I can tell you a little bit about them. Stop is a global tobacco industry watchdog and they hold tobacco companies for uh, everything. They think that tobacco companies need to know the dangers and the problems that they're arising for our society. And the Global Tobacco Control is another one of these free online resources that you can go and look into to learn a lot more about tobacco prevention. So we've talked a little bit about these, but you might be wondering, what do they look like? So first, the Global Tobacco Control. As I said, online resource that is free for trainings, for resources, policy scans, everything that you need, you can find on Global Tobacco Control's website. Next up, we have the STOP, the Global Tobacco Industry Watchdog. And as you can see, they are committed to tobacco prevention as their homepage currently states that our world is being burned by tobacco. So I would definitely give them a look and go in and read some articles from them. Next up, CADCA. As I said, I've actually been a participant for CADCA and I've got to see their work firsthand and it is amazing. It is very wonderful. Go ahead and give them a quick look after conference ends today because they are committed to building these drug-free communities across the globe. And lastly, the Global Tobacco Control section of the CDC's website, which shows an interactive map over their data, which you can go in and look at individual countries and their youth population who smoke, the adult population who smoke, and everything in between. So with that, I'm gonna say if there's any questions, go ahead and throw that down into the uh, Q&A box. So I will give that a couple minutes. And if I don't see any questions, which I still don't, I'm going to go ahead and say, thank you everyone for attending my session about how tobacco companies control the globe and how we can fight back against it. Bye, everyone.